not overly comfortable with the new passing style. The unedifying statistic of not having won a single game well in charge. Wigan's owners, what the hell are they doing? Arsenal invincible Colo Torre was sacked by Wigan yesterday after he barely even started. Torre came in on the 29th of November during the World Cup hiatus. He was in charge for just 59 days, taking only seven championship games, nine in total. Torre has immediately paid the price for his team's poor form and leaves with the unedifying statistic of not having won a single game well in charge. His record in all comps played nine, won zero, drawn three, lost six. Goals four, eight, goals against 21. We'll get back to Torre imminently, but just to set the scene, Wigan have sadly been a bit of a basket case club for the past few seasons. In 2020, during the early days of the pandemic, Wigan were taken over and then put into administration four weeks later. Paul Cook's team were comfortably mid-table, but that 12-point deduction relegated them. And of course, with administration, we know the vultures are coming. They swooped in to grab the likes of Kiefer Moore, Jamal Lowe, Anthony Robinson. Those players are all currently on the books at Premier League clubs. The Latics were in admin for pretty much all of the 2020-21 season following their relegation to League One. They got taken over by the Phoenix 21 group during the run-in. An interim box, Liam Richardson, who'd stepped up from assistant, led them to survival. Richardson was given the full-time position and backed with a huge influx of players. He brilliantly then led Wigan all the way up the table to the League One title and promotion to the championship. Never a dull moment, eh? If Wigan were very competitive recruiters at League One level, the opposite could be said at championship level. This summer, other than a couple of frees and loans, Richardson went up a level, but with the majority of his League One team, and with the side struggling on a run of nine defeats in 12 EFL games, he was sacked in November. Incredibly, Richardson was given a new three-year contract four games before he was fired. That then brings us to Colo Torre, an absolutely superb Premier League player with Arsene Wenger at Arsenal and a coaching student of Brendan Rodgers at both Leicester and Celtic. Yes, he was untried in the big job, but with the trend in the championship for younger coaches at the moment, the appointment was by no means a shock. By the way, another big contract was handed out. Torre was signed for three and a half years. Torre started with a good draw down at Millwall on debut, and I covered his second game against Sheffield United on Watch Along. So, you can check back what me and the chat said at the time if you think I'm being wise after the event. But it was fairly clear, fairly quickly, that sections of that Wigan first 11 were not overly comfortable with the new passing style they were being asked to carry out. This was obviously a big departure from Richardson's League One champions side, who weren't really a ball retention machine and actually topped the division for set piece goals. It got very ugly very quickly for Colo then with three consecutive 4-1 championship defeats. Ouch. They did get a last gasp draw but at struggling Cardiff and then a trilogy against Luton featuring an FA Cup replay, an exit and then a league defeat wraps it all up in a bow. Now I always try and make sure in these situations not to make this into a black and white good cop bad cop argument blaming either one or other of the owner or the manager. Colo Torre, look, he could have been absolutely terrible, not fit for purpose and not delivered what he promised. And in isolation, it could have been the right decision to fire him now. Sometimes it does take more balls to admit, I made a bad call, accept the collateral and what goes with it and make a change. Wigan do have an empty weekend coming up before the window closes and the running begins. So if this is the right decision in isolation, then I guess there is an argument for doing it right now with the two-week gap. I feel sorry for Colo Torre. It's his 
professional life. Of course, results could have perked up given time. We'll never know that, but on the trajectory Torre had Wigan on, they were very much going down. Which brings us around to Wigan's owners. What the hell are they doing? Up until about three months ago, I'd have given them a big fat thumbs up. They took the club out of admin. They then stayed loyal with Liam Richardson, who'd seen them through that high wire act. They backed him in League One and won promotion. Fantastic. Yes, he wasn't backed in the same way this summer in the championship, but the momentum had produced a good start. And when he got that three-year extension, it looked like they were backing their man and going down the managerial stability route in order to try and keep Wigan up. I just have no idea what's happened since. Yes, you can always argue that the results can dictate any reaction, frankly, although that does get a bit of a reductive position in the face of some of this evidence. To give a manager, an existing manager that is, a three-year deal and then sack him four games later, then sign a new manager, give him a three-and-a-half-year deal and sack him nine games later, does just feel absolutely bonkers. Now, if the rumour that Sean Maloney, former Wigan player, is going to be the next manager. If that rumour is true, that adds another layer of absurdity as Maloney was interviewed in the process that got Colo Torre the job back in November. Yes, again, it is okay to make a mistake. And yes, of course, it shows strength to admit it. But the worry here for Wigan fans is a very steady flow of mistakes compounding now from the Wigan ownership. If you're a channel regular here, you'll know my relegation theories. It's normally a combination of either, or more than one, of owners, chaos, size, or bad luck being at the root of a relegation. And I dare say we might be checking at least a couple of those boxes right now for Wigan. Get your thoughts in then via the comments on Colo Torre, Wigan's operational acumen or lack of therein at the moment, and whether Sean Maloney is the solution, and if not, who? I had a great time yesterday afternoon chatting to Norwich City's BBC commentator, Chris Gorham. If you want to hear Chris give a 20-minute masterclass on his preparation and process for commentating on an EFL game, then head over, it is behind the paywall, to patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. But for the princely sum of absolutely none of your hard-earned income, you can click up here to see Chris and I go head-to-head -head predicting this week's small championship round and beefing it up by looking at the FA Cup action.